What's going on guys, Matty Eyes here, Leads for Locals. In this video, I wanna do a quick breakdown of the difference between ScreenPal and Loom. So you can decide uh, which one is the best screen share reporting software for what you're trying to accomplish. I actually use both. I use ScreenPal for my longer videos and I use Loom for my shorter videos. Like if I wanna do, if I would just wanna set a quick update to somebody, like a one to three minute video, maybe I'll use Loom just cause it's like, it's just very, it's, it's a little bit faster, well, quite a bit faster uh, getting the videos. Uh, they upload a lot and process a lot faster than ScreenPal usually. So that's what I'll use Loom for. And it's like Loom, you just literally, it's, it's a Google Chrome extension and you click it right here and you can start recording and then just send the video off. So it's really good for short videos. It's good for long videos too. I've had issues with it in the past though. It's one of the reasons I don't use Loom for my longer videos. Uh, because I don't know if it was just a glitch with my account, but, uh, and, you know, certainly try it yourself. But uh, when I was using Loom uh, for longer videos, for some reason, just out of the blue, it would stop recording my video. And I would admit, I, like, I didn't have half my video. It was just really, really bizarre. And obviously very frustrating because I would make 30, 40 minute videos that I had to redo because it didn't work, right? So I'm not saying that would happen with your account, so still give it a try, but that's one of the reasons I use Loom for uh, for the short video. So, uh, but we'll uh, actually start with ScreenPal here. And guys, uh, if you want to support the channel, I'll have affiliate links for these things uh, down in the description. So, you know, if you want to support the channel, I really appreciate it going through my link. Uh, ScreenPal. Uh, so I absolutely love ScreenPal. Really, really cool features. Uh, you can actually get started for free, but it's pretty cost effective, especially for uh, what it what it gives you, like all the different features. And if you're going to be uh, creating a lot of video contents, I would recommend just uh, just paying it. It's it's pretty affordable. Uh, but up here at the top, we go to my content and then I'll show you guys how the app, like the actual reporting app works here in a second. But I want to show you the dashboard and some of the different features you have uh, available to you after you make the video. It's really neat. So you can actually upload videos, which is pretty cool. So if you've been using a different software and you want to switch over, but you want to bring those videos over to, uh, into ScreenPal, you can absolutely do that. And then uh, the other thing that uh, I, I want to mention just kind of off the bat here is to make sure you guys organize your videos. Uh, I usually use folders here. Uh, if you're going to be creating a lot of videos, you definitely want to stay organized. The best way to do that is to start uh, start your organization correctly uh, and, and from the from the get go. So make sure you're creating folders here. It's pretty easy. Click the plus sign, give it a title. And then um, I think we can just click the three dots here and move the folder, right? So very, very easy. All right, uh, let's see, over here we got videos. I don't mess with images too much. This is usually, like you can do screenshots and stuff, like, uh, you know, yeah, just like screenshots uh, when you're recording and stuff like that, or even if you're not recording. I don't really use it very much, but uh, it, it is an option. Uh, quizzes, this is really cool, guys. This is a very neat feature. Uh, inside of screen, uh, screen pal. I don't think Loom has quizzes right now. They might, uh, but they're always adding new features. So I don't want to, you know, by the time you watch this, they, they might have it. But right, as of right now, screen pal uh, has the quizzes. Loom does not. It's very, very cool. So if you are putting a course together, maybe you're a teacher, um, uh, but or, or you just want to make your content more engaging and interactive, this is a great way to do it. It's very easy to make. Up here at the top, we're just going to click on new quiz. We'll give it a title. All right, you can search for the title or you can scroll down. All right, I'm just going to use this one for now. And then we create quiz and there's different types of questions that we can ask. And then also uh, we can we can put multiple questions throughout different parts of the video. It's really neat. So if you make like a really important point in your video and then a minute later you want to quiz them on it, great way to do it. All right, so um, they also have an AI tool that will generate quiz questions for you. I haven't tried this yet. Give it a shot, see what it's like. Uh, you might have to upgrade in order to use their AI, but uh, yeah, just keep that in mind. All right, so we'll add a question. We do multiple choice, true, false, short answer, poll, rating, you know, multiple choice here. All right, uh, we can add uh, different answers. Uh, let's see, there we go, boom. All right, you know, as many uh, as many answers as you want, I guess. Um, and then, you know, different options here. We click save, right? And then, uh, whoops, uh, I wanted to show you to, uh, let's do true, false this time. Uh, uh, let's see, um, you put the question, correct or not, save, Wait, where's the, uh, hang on. We're, uh, I know we're able to, 
put this at, oh, it's up here at the top, duh, right here, uh, uh, at a specific time of the video. So you can put it in the beginning of the video, the end of the video, or at a specific time. So I just think this is an awesome, awesome feature of ScreenPal. So, uh, but let's go to the videos. I want to show you a couple of other things you could do here. They do have a video editor as well. So let's go ahead and click the details on the video. So anytime you use the app uh, or the software to record, it's going to automatically put your videos into the dashboard here. Um, you can rename the video right here. We can You can leave it unlisted. You can password protect it, which I think is pretty cool. So if you have certain members of your team or certain clients, certain students that you, um, you only want to see or only want to have access to this video, then you can password protect it. Um, you can also make it public if you want, you know, if you want people to find it randomly on the internet. Uh, it's not really an ideal search engine, but I suppose any exposure is good exposure. Uh, I always leave mine on listed though. So uh, let's see what else. Uh, we can share the video so you can send a, a direct link to the video if you want. Um, I usually uh, copy embed codes right here. So let's go to share video. Uh, here's the direct link again, but if we scroll down, um, click the drop down here because this is the, so here's the embed code and we just copy it and then if we scroll down we can adjust the size um, i usually just keep the 640 pixel right there uh, player options so uh, video title transparent background I actually haven't tried that but uh, auto play the video so you have uh, i always leave player controls on though so if people want to pause it skip it speed it up etc they can do that but um, i like uh, embedding the code uh, i like getting the embed code as opposed to downloading it. It's just a lot faster this way. Uh, so if we click the three dots, you can download it. But I like uh, when, I'm, when I'm putting videos into my courses or membership sites uh, inside of high level, um, I always, like when I create a new lesson, I'll always put the embed code in the source file or the source part uh, or HTML part of the lesson. Uh, and then you just paste it in and then the video pops up. It's awesome. It's a lot faster, uh, particularly like when you have longer videos, they're gonna take a long time to download. And then you have to upload them as well, which is going to take a long time. So I find it to be a lot more efficient to use embed code. So just keep that in mind. And guys, if you want a full step-by-step -step, start to finish tutorial on how to create a course and membership site inside of high level very quickly, very easily, I will link that training down below in the description. Make sure you check that out. Uh, high level is just awesome for courses and membership sites. Can't recommend it enough. And of course, I'll have an affiliate link down below that gives you a 30-day free trial uh, plus a high level boot camp as well if you want to try it out. All right, uh, moving on. So that's uh, that's how we share the video. I haven't, uh, actually, we'll get to the interaction tools in a minute. Uh, video details. So again, you can change the title here, put a summary, you can add captions, all that good stuff. All right, interaction tools. We already talked about the quizzes, uh, but you can also add buttons and links, guys. This is so freaking powerful. Like, you know, if you have other services, uh, maybe you have other other things that your clients can upgrade to, uh, other products. Uh, maybe you want to send out, send them to an affiliate program with your affiliate link on it. Maybe you want them to book a call. You know, so anything like that, you can create a, a button here called an action button at a specific time in the video or at the end of the video. It's totally up to you. If you do a specific time in the video, I would definitely allow the, view, the, the viewer to skip. We don't want to annoy people by forcing them to click the, the button and stuff. All right, uh, so just keep that in mind, but you can give it a headline, the button text, here's the button URL. And I, th this is just such a powerful feature. You can change the button size to the font, all that stuff. So really great way to add some call, uh, additional calls to action into your video content. Very powerful stuff. All right, um, the other thing you can do is uh, send to video editor. I, I don't have much information on this, guys. I use Capwing for my video editor. If you want a, a video on that, I have a tutorial on it, on some of the basic things that I do with Capwing. I will link that down in the description, that training down in the description as well. Uh, but they do have a video editor and uh, I would recommend at least tr uh, trying it out. So, uh, and see how you like it. All right, uh, let's see, that's about it. Uh, those are the main things that I use uh, ScreenPal for, all right? So uh, let's, uh, let's check out the app. So uh, you can actually uh, launch it from your desktop, I guess. Uh, I just prefer to download the app. Uh, I don't even know where. I think when you sign up, it'll it'll prompt you to download and install, uh, like the shortcut or whatnot. But either way, uh, if you download it, you have the shortcut here. All right. Uh, let's click it, and we're going to click on. Uh, so again, you can do screenshots. I haven't messed with stories yet. Create a story from script or storyboard. So maybe play around with that. But like I said, I I just primarily use this for my long uh, my long videos. All right. But uh, we'll click record. 
And over here, this is very, it's pretty, pretty standard for a video recorder here. You're going to click record. Once you do, then you're going to have an option to stop, restart, pause, et cetera. Um, also a neat feature is the drawing tools up here. So if you click this, uh, this guy right here, hide, draw and zoom controls up here at the top, right? So we can toggle that on and off and we can actually draw on the screen. All right. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's pretty neat. So that's good stuff. All right, so neat feature on that part. So we're gonna go ahead and delete that. All right, and then obviously you click done once you're done recording. And then you can you can just share your screen like I am right now. Uh, you can you do full camera and uh, you can also do both, right? So where like if you do both, there'll be like a little uh, a little camera down here at the bottom uh, while you're sharing your screen. That, that, that's usually what I do. All right, so that's that's screen pop, pretty, pretty simple. All right, let's, uh, let's move on to Loom. All right, so again, Loom is very easy. So we click the, the Google Chrome extension here. Uh, let's see, you can do camera or no camera. Okay, so you can toggle that on and off. All right, what's up? Uh, you can also at the, uh, just exit the video right here if you don't, if you don't wanna do that. And then uh, let's see, I believe, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, here it is, camera only. So you can you can do just a screen share, you can do camera only, or you can do what, I mean, I just exited out of the camera, but um, you can do a screen share and video just like uh, Screen Pal as well. All right, click start recording. Uh, same same features here, pause, restart, cancel it all together. You know, that, that part's pretty easy. All right, let's go to the dashboard where the videos are uploaded and processed. So again, make sure you're creating folders to stay organized and you can actually upload videos as well, just like Screen Pal. And then uh, let's see. Uh, let's um. So so you can click. Uh, you can copy the link to send directly to people. Uh, I haven't tried share to space. So I'm not really sure what this is. Uh, three dots. Yeah, this is pretty basic stuff right here. Um, let's actually open up the video though and go through some of the things you can do on Loom. It's pretty similar to Screen Pal. Uh, I I don't think it's as like the like the interactive interaction tools are different. Um, you can add a button. So if we go to edit here. Uh, let's see, we can add a link right here. Uh, you have more flexibility with this uh, with ScreenPal than with Loom, at least at the time of this recording. So you can only, uh, I think the, the button will either stay on the video the entire time, or you can only show it at the end of the video. As of right now, I don't think you can, I don't see an option to choose a specific time for the call to action to show up. So that would be one one downside to Loom, but still not you know, not not a deal breaker, I'd say. But put your link here, text. You can choose location. Okay, change the colors, all that good stuff. Click save. Uh, you can also uh, down here at the bottom, you can add a summary of the video and uh, different chapters, so kind of like timestamps. I'm pretty sure you can do that with Screen Pal as well, but uh, they just make it a little bit you know, easy more it's more easy to access i guess and use on loom but you can add chapters right here to break to to uh, break up the video uh let's see what else we have you can edit the video by transcript uh, i don't usually do that again i use cat wing for my video editing but sometimes i will use the trim feature right here and like let's say i screwed up in the beginning and then i restarted but like i, I didn't actually restart the video but i want to i want to cut out a part like different parts of the video i can do that all right, so you just drag that to cut those parts off and then you would save and exit. Uh, you can also revert to original as well if you make a mistake. All right, so I do use that sometimes at an audio variable. I actually don't know what that means. I've never used that feature. Record once, personalize for all. Use, uh, yeah, it's AI tool, AI to duplicate your video with personalized audio of each recipient's name spoken in your voice. That's pretty neat. Okay, not to, I'll have to play around with that. But uh, let's see what else. I, I, that's uh, I mean, that's kind of it for for Loom. Uh, oh, uh, video thumbnails. I should have. I don't think I mentioned that with ScreenPal. I'll, I'll show you where you up to, uh, upload custom thumbnails. Uh, I, I do recommend this uh, because it. Well, you know, it's not it's not a huge deal, but I think it just it makes the videos more professional and engaging. I guess so. You can add a video thumbnails here. And let's see, I don't really play around with the um, with the audience tab here very much, but let me check that out. Uh, for ScreenPal, where the custom thumbnails are, so I'll go back to editing one of our videos here. 
So I just clicked on details on one of the videos and it's right here. So you can upload a custom thumbnail uh, in Screen Pal as well. Yep. Uh, also to get the embed code for Loom videos, you're gonna click share and embed. I usually do a fixed size and I'll copy the embed code. You can also choose who uh, is able to view the, uh, the video. So you can do like specific members, only people with added access, similar to like uh, adding a password. Uh, you can add a password right here. So I just click more options and you can choose a password as well. All right. So uh, I think that's, uh, yeah, that's about it, guys. Uh, hopefully that helps. Uh, if you guys have any questions, drop them down in the comment section below. If you want me to uh, do any other videos on any other products, software that I use, whatever, uh, totally happy to do that. But um, yeah, at the end of the day, again, both of these are really, really good tools. I use both of them just for different reasons. So I would say to, to try both and see which one you like better and, and then go from there. All right, guys, I hope you are crushing it. Appreciate your time and I'll talk to you in the next one. To your success, Matty Ice is out.